Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. All right, welcome back to Prime Time Local News, yep, yep, second yep. hour, lots on the go today. Uh, social media was buzzing. But before we get to that on social media, I want to talk about our question of the day today because it was quite, well, it was a little controversial. Uh, the, the result. Yeah, the result. Yeah. We'll get into the results a little bit later. But uh, I asked the question, uh, do you think back paddling should be brought back into the classroom because a school in Georgia did, and those teachers are allowed to hit the children up to three times. And I, personally, I'm surprised by the poll results. They're, they're changing, but I'm still surprised. Majority is saying... Yeah. Bring so, back the paddle. Yeah. That's an interesting result yeah. any day of the week. But uh, one look at it too is that, well, that's in Georgia. We're in Canada. This yeah. is true. But it almost, why, like, I just want to know why Georgia brought this back in the first place. Like, what, maybe yeah. they m really misbehave there. No, maybe, maybe. It, maybe it's supervised. You've got a couple people looking on and ensuring that uh. it's actually one, two, three, and it's placed at a specific spot. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll talk more on our uh, question of the day a <laughs> little know. bit later. But uh, <laughs> first, we're going to check in with Connor. Connor, what's coming up in our local sports today? Well, the wrestler soccer teams look to have bounce back games this weekend as they make their first road trips uh, this weekend. And yeah, just not a good start to their season. Yeah, so, all yeah. right. Yeah. And then markets affected by the weather right yeah. now. There's a lot of external noise, and the weather is one part of it. But we've been looking on what's happening with NAFTA. And of course, yes. there's the revamped Trans Pacific Partnership deal. So, Oh, the market's taking it. All right. Well, all of that and more coming up on Primetime Local News. But before any of that, we're going to go check in with Brittany, who's down at Rising Axe. All right. I've been getting some axe throwing lessons here. Now, let's see if I've gotten any better yet. All right. Your turn. Ah! Come on. I promise I have hit the target, but right now we're going to head over to Stacy for a check-in at local news. Thanks very much, Brittany. Well, it was a somber night in Humboldt as the Broncos played their first game since April's deadly bus crash that claimed the lives of 16 people, including 10 players. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Standing arm in arm, former and current players stood stoically during a powerful rendition of Amazing Grace. 29 yellow and green flags unfurled to honor the victims. The numbers of all those involved in the crash were retired, never to be worn again by another Broncos player. Only two players who survived the crash remain on the Broncos roster this season. Praise God. Praise God. City Council had a review of a new traffic bylaw for Lloydminster containing new rules regarding trailers being parked on residential streets. As Brittany Matika reports, City Council isn't ready to pass a bylaw just yet. Council is looking whether hitched and unhitched trailers should be able to park on city streets. And for what length of time, administration proposed that unhitched trailers shouldn't be allowed to park on roadways for any amount of time. However, councillors were not sure if this was the right step to take. I don't think it's okay to drop it off on Sunday night and leave it there for the remainder of the week till you hitch back up on Friday. There should be some responsibility there just because I do feel that if everyone in the streets did that, it does leave room for um, accidents definitely to happen. Council was very mixed on what bylaws should be in place for trailers. This created a lot of back and forth in chambers. It affects everyone. Uh, there was discussions about campers being parked over sidewalks and campers being parked in front of other people's places and things like that. There's a lot of discussion and we want to make sure that information is clear. Council has asked administration to provide them with more information to bring back to another meeting. Oh, I think it's wonderful that people get out with their families and do enjoy the camping season. I do think there should be also some responsibility on the owners for those trailers that they don't just leave them on the street all summer long. There was questions around licensed, unlicensed, insured, uninsured. So I think we're going to seek some clarity from administration on that very matter to ensure that people understand, we understand as council before we create a bylaw. That's the most important to ensure that there's clarity for council because if we don't understand it, I'm sure most of the residents will be left not quite clear. Brittany Matika, Primetime Local News. On day two of the Lloydminster Heavy Oil Show, our Brett Holden went to talk about more of the environmentally friendly groups at the show this year and how it could affect the industry. 
The heavy oil industry can affect the environment. However, there are plenty of groups who are aiming to help limit the effects in one way or another. I mean, environmentally, it's a word that really gets thrown around a lot, and it's actually nice to see that a lot of companies aren't just paying lip service to it nowadays, that they are actually being you know, proactive in their approaches to protect the environment from their day-to-day -day operations. Halo is one of those companies who do use products to help the environment for many things. Well, it's the strategies that and the services that we bring to our clients is, is sort of what makes us environmental and, and the fact that we're trying to prevent contamination and we're trying to prevent, um, you know, damage to the ground and to the surrounding resources and, you know, the waterways and things like that. Even here locally, there are some companies trying to help as well. They want to take care, we want to take care of the planet where we live and reside and have it so that it's in good shape for our children and our children's children, you know, and it's good to see everyone's springing up here locally as well because it keeps it's not like we're a bigger company that's you know branching out and going further away and don't have touch with it we're local we're taking care of local and this may be something to expect for the future of the industry you're not impacting you know wildlife or the water system or anything like that it's it's trying to keep the oil and gas industry moving while you know not having too big of an impact on the environment i always used to say uh, once we're done doing all when they take their ball and go home they leave the yard exactly as it was when they got there brett holden primetime local news Riding boundaries around Alberta have changed, and that means nominations for various political parties are being held. In the new riding of Bonneville, St. Paul, Cold Lake, current UCP MLA David Hansen beat Cold Lake Mayor Craig Copeland last night. Our Justin Marshall is standing by with him right now. I'm Justin Marshall for Primetime Local News out here in Cold Lake at the marina, and I'm joined with brand new UCP nominee uh, elected Dave Hansen for Bonneville, Cold Lake, St. Paul. What was your reaction when um, it came down last night uh, that you you get to represent the UCP in this great riding? Well, it was a bit of a relief because uh, me and my team have worked very hard and uh, I have to uh, thank them. And, and the other candidates also worked very hard. Uh, you know, we it's a, it's a tough putting your name out there and getting out and uh, somebody has to win and some, some has to lose. This riding has been conservative since 1993. It was liberal with Leo Vassar. Is this a guaranteed victory uh, next go around come the election 2019, 2020? You know, nothing's guaranteed in politics. That's one thing I've learned in three and a half years and we're gonna work very hard to make sure that this constituency stays conservative. What does the Lakeland need and, and what do you think um, you can bring to the region? Well, I think we need some collaboration between all the municipalities, and, and like I said in my, you know, uh, other statements that I've made, um, it includes the whole northeastern part of the province, including Wood Buffalo, Lacobiche, and the county of uh, Saint Paul, and Via Bonneville. What, what do you think the biggest issue on um, constituents' minds are when you were going around door to door? Well, right now I drove up here to Cold Lake today and saw all the snow on all the fields and the farm fields, and uh, we haven't even started harvest yet. If this is the middle of September, I'm really, really concerned about uh, our farmers. Well, Stacy, coming up, we're going to ask Mr. Hansen to dive into the ID-349 air weapons range oil controversy, and we'll get his thoughts on that. Back to you in studio. Thanks so much for that, Justin. Now let's check in with Michaela and find out what's trending. Well, today's question of the day got a little bit controversial. A school in Georgia reintroduced back paddling as a punishment in the classroom. So I wanted to know, do you think back paddling should be brought back as a form of punishment in the classroom here? Would you like to see it back? Overwhelming response on our poll. 75% said yes. That number is going down currently as we are live. And it's currently sitting at 62% say bring it back. 38% say absolutely not. I have to say I'm a little surprised because I really thought this would go the other way. But uh, I'm not a parent, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is the way it could go. We'll chat more about that after the break.
right, welcome back to Primetime Local News. We just can't stop talking about this question of the day because it it just, I think it in caught us all by result, surprise. The result is in, incredulous, yeah. to, to put it mildly. Um, yeah, you I, would think in this day and age that folks would have said differently. Well, I think we stirred away from backpedaling and corporal punishment for a reason. And then the fact that George is reintroducing it's a little, uh, I'd taken by surprise for me, but you're a father and I, yeah. was, I asked you the question, would you be okay if, uh, if a teacher hit your child? No, not, not in this day and age. And this is coming from someone who grew up with corporal punishment. So when you're telling me uh, three, three, <laughs> <laughs> Three paddles, but you, you just started counting. Jeez. We got a whole lot more than that. So I understand the sentiment that folks are saying, well, they want to return to that. I hear that. Yeah. But I think we're a bit more enlightened now, and there are many other ways of dealing with with discipline issues. Yeah, well, maybe it's because, you know, kids are getting away with so much this day and age. Like they almost have to scare them a little bit with the idea and maybe not yeah. go through but with it. It's, it's not only at that level. You look at the legal system and folks talk about yeah. it. The legal system comes off as being so lenient. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, although, uh, although I heard in the wings that court this week was <laughs> a bit on the other side. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, the judge came down really hard <laughs> and folks were liking it. Okay, well, that is our question of the day. You do still have time to weigh in on uh, Twitter and Facebook, so let us know your thoughts. But we're going to go check in with Brittany, who's been practicing her axe throwing, and I hope she got a little bit better. Three, two. Richard Young joins me again, and as you saw earlier, my axe throwing's not that good, but there is a way that we can improve our axe throwing if you want to get involved here. They're starting an axe throwing league. Yes, it runs uh, starting September 27th, a Thursday night. Runs uh, from 7 until 8.30 and goes for eight weeks, and um, anybody can join. It's good for um, adults mainly. I mean, there's a kids league. We could start that as well, but it um, people can come out and throw axes and learn how to throw better and, and some competition certainly from other people. So. And whether you've ever picked up an axe or you never have, this league is still for you. Yes, it is, because we do a lot of training as well and do a lot of safety things as well that we do. And, and, uh, but people will learn how to throw axes. Though. That's wonderful. And uh, there's a little bit of a cost, but I'm telling you, you guys, this axe throwing is fun. It is a challenge. And actually, when we were off camera, I managed to hit the bullseye. Yes, you did. You did very well. So are you trying it again now? Uh, I am going to try it again, but I think we have a little treat for everyone at home who wants to watch me hit the target. All right, are we ready for this? Oh, oh darn, we had a little bit of a technical issue. Is it going? <laughs> Woo, you guys see that? Oh yeah, that was a big moment in my life. I finally did it. <gasps> Perfect, well thank you so much everyone for joining me in that momentous occasion. And we're gonna have a little bit more coming up with Richard a little bit later in the show, but right now we're gonna check in with Michaela to see what's going on in your weather forecast. All right, I was going to say she's lucky she got that on video or else I never would have believed her. But it's the perfect weather to head on down there because only three degrees here in the border city feeling more like minus one and some snow is falling from the sky. It's going to continue into the morning hours and that could actually turn into some freezing drizzle as well as some fog could be coming into the area. So do watch out on your morning commute. Looking at our numbers. Oh, this is the wrong map. Well, this is up north. They got a quite a big dumping of snow over the last uh, couple of days, actually. Oh, our uh, AccuWeather here is a little frozen. There we go. Here's a look at the next 24 hours. So there's that precipitation that's coming in overnight into the morning that could cause that freezing rain as well as some fog into the area. Looking at our watches and warnings, none currently in the area, although North Battleford is currently under a frost advisory. So that's not good news for anyone who is looking to get their crop in the bin. A little bit slow here on the on the AccuWeather, but Friday looking six degree, but we six degrees for the high zero for the low. Saturday, that precipitation is going to be on and off all weekend. 75% chance on Saturday, five for the high, two for the low. And Sunday again, five degrees for the high and two for the low. I'll have more details as well as your seven day forecast coming up a little, a little bit later in the show.
Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. The Lloyd Minster Budget Engagement Survey ends tomorrow and the city is hoping for more people to complete it. The feedback from the survey is summarized and then council reviews it and uses that information to help guide their decision making process. The budget affects everybody in the community, whether it's service levels, personal taxes on your properties, commercial or residential. It's really important that we get as much feedback as we can because we need to take that feedback and use it to shape budgets going forward. And that feedback is invaluable, it really is. The survey takes five minutes to fill out and citizens are able to find it online at yourvoicelloyd.ca. The Lloydminster and District SPCA is calling on local farmers to help them win grant money for the Barn Buddies program. The Canada's Farmers Grow Communities Grant is offering $2,500 for a nonprofit nominated by farmers and the SPCA hopes to win for their Barn and Shopcat program. They can help uh, farmers in um, providing a service really um, and uh, as long as the farmers are willing to provide uh, food, shelter and, and veterinary care as needed for these uh, pets, it's a great opportunity um, for these cats, like I said, to have a, a second chance um, at life. Barn Buddies helps cats who are unadoptable for one reason or another find suitable living as shop, warehouse or barn cats. Farmers can nominate the Lloydminster and District SPCA at canadafarmers.ca. Well, riding boundaries around Alberta have changed. That means nominations for various political parties are being held around the region. In the new riding of Bonneville, St. Paul, Cold Lake, current UCP MLA David Hansen beat Cold Lake Mayor Craig Copeland last night. Let's head back to Cold Lake where Justin Marshall is right now. Justin Marshall for Primetime Local News outside the Cold Lake Marina on a very snowy day here in uh, Cold Lake with David Hansen, the brand new nominee for the UCP for Bonneville, Cold Lake and St. Paul riding. You're the current MLA St. Paul Laclavish Two Hills. Um, I want to ask you, so ID 349, there's been some controversy with the air weapons range oil money. What do you think we should do? Well, it's caused a real, real division up in the area here. And uh, it is a, you know, the air weapons range and the industry we have up here in oil and gas is beneficial to the entire area. And uh, we do contribute significantly to the economy of the province and the country. And I would, I would like to see us all work together, the, the city of Cold Lake, MD of Bonneville, town of Bonneville, and work together and, and have a strong voice to, to bring to the provincial government and the federal government to support our infrastructure up here. You know, we contribute significantly and I think we deserve a little bit more recognition for it. So would you like to share it between all your communities if, if you do get elected as the representative here? No, well, that's all already. That's the deal that was struck between the NDP government uh, current in last November. So that's the deal that's out there right now. Do you like that deal? Um, it's not. It's not perfect, but uh, it does recognize the contribution of the other communities to, to uh, the air weapons range work as well. Would you look at it and see if you could do something better, something different? Well, I like I said, I think we need to look at uh, get better recognition from the province for the co contribution of our entire northeast re region of the province and the, I want to include Fort McMurray and Lac La Biche into that and uh, work together and have a strong voice to uh, get the recognition we deserve up here in northeastern Alberta. Well coming up later on the show we're going to ask Mr. Hansen what we can do to get people back to work in the Lakeland region here in Bonneville, Cold Lake and St. Paul. The oil industry is hurting. We're going to get his comments coming up shortly but we're going to send it back to you in studio Stacy. All right, thanks, Justin. And now let's go out to Axe Rising with Brittany, who is trying her hand now at archery. Two, one. All right, you saw my axe throw and that I got to be successful at that. And now Richard Young is going to show me and teach me a little bit about archery. So they have it here, safe archery. That's for kids. Isn't that right? Yes, it is. So we have blunt point arrows, which means just safe if they shoot somebody, which they shouldn't. But if they do, it doesn't hurt. And um, so it's part of our safe archery program that we have, yes. So they don't have an actual tip on them, if you can see this here at home. So it's just kind of like a foam piece, and you have this inflatable target behind us? Yeah, so it's hoverball archery, yeah. And they just have to take shots and try and knock the balls off the air pockets. So. And uh, how good are you at archery, Richard? I am not the expert, but you will be soon. 
So Richard <laughs> is going to give me some more uh, s some more tips and tricks on how this is going to work next time. And now this is just a regular size mm -hmm. bow. Yes, it is. Yeah, and it comes with the. Uh, this is the bow and system that they used on Hunger Games and movies. They they learned from these these bow and arrows also. All right, so I'm going to learn how to be the next Katniss next time when we come back. But right now, we're just going to head back over to the studio and check in with them. But Katniss has got some competition. Right. How about the next Brittany even? Uh, let's go to agriculture news. With the NAFTA hanging in the balance and the weather not pitching in, producers are battling to get the crop in and shut out the external factors. In this week's agriculture report, we get some market analysis. Strong prices and demand are the main features of cattle markets in 2018. Prices for calves heading into the fall are up 10 to 15 cents over last year, averaging about $2.25 for a 500-pound plus animal. Canadian beef demand is strong at home and abroad. Year-to-date exports uh, up another 5% over last year, which was a strong year as well. Even with the external noise from the NAFTA negotiations and the revamped TPP deal that still needs ratification, beef is still bullish. Our number two country for exports so far this year without the deal is Japan, uh, up 19% so far in 2018. And you just kind of look at that data and say, how much better could that be if we continue to get uh, more competitive access uh, into some of those countries like Japan? Hogs have been affected by NAFTA negotiations. Brian Peria with Canfax is watching the African swine fever, which is affecting China and Eastern Europe, and whether that factors into hog prices. There's also the issue of feed. The feed costs have been quite high. We've seen, you know, if you got barley and uh, feed barley has been, ex you know, quite high, whether it's being exported to China or fed into southern Alberta. You know, the only issue there is we're actually importing corn from the U.S. because it's cheaper. Perry always in on the crop side. The canola has been fairly strong. You know, soybeans were hard, hard hit with the China deal uh, or on, you know, the trade wars, call it what you will. Uh, so, you know, those prices in the States dropped in places almost $2 a bushel. Uh, canola has held in relatively well. The dollar softened, um, you know, in that $10.50, $11 dollar range for, well, $11 into, you know, deferred delivery stuff, which is okay, but um, there's still a lot of uncertainty. The weather will remain a factor as producers try to get the crop in the bin. Back to cattle, while prices remain good, the dry conditions to the south and the price of hay is cause for concern. Producers may want to sell early. I think there's been a lot of, uh, you know, early movement already, and if not actual physical movement, certainly um, pre-selling on some of these video and satellite sales. Uh, so selling your calves today for deferred uh, delivery at today's price or at the price established today. Overall, there's going to be pressure on the cow-calf market in the fall and producers will need to seek alternative feed rations if they're not selling. This ag report is brought to you by the Lloydminster Co-op Agro Centre. Depend on them for product, tools and expert advice. Shop at your local Lloyd Co-op Agro Centre with branch locations in Lashburn and Neilburg. And it's a good point as ever to have a look at the agriculture prices. City Center Auto Body is proud to offer the paintless dent removal system. This works by going behind the panel, working out small dents. Lloyd Minster's trusted auto body shop for over 35 years. Well, hockey fans were very vocal on social media today. Basically, everyone was talking hockey from Humboldt to the NHL. That's what everyone was talking about with Canada's national sport. Let's take a look at these uh, tweets that came out uh, today. This is from the SJHL. 
beautiful tribute to the Humboldt Broncos yesterday. They did lose 2-1 to the Nipawin Hawks, but winners in our hearts. That was the first time they took to the ice since that April 6th uh, crash. And this is uh, Tyler Sagan got, or he extended his contract for another eight years in Dallas. And they announced it with the Super Mario's thing. So you can check out that video on Twitter that had people talking. But this is what people were talking about. Eric Carlson, he got traded to uh, the San Jose Sharks. And people are saying they did not get a fair trade in return because the Sens are receiving both a first and second round pick. Sports fans are not happy about this unless you're a fan of the Sharks, I suppose. Uh, but we're going to check in with Connor in our local sports. Thanks a lot, Michaela. Rustler Soccer had a rough start to the 2018 season on Sunday, but both squads will have a chance to make up for it if they can perform during their first road trip of the year. Josh Ryan has more. The women's soccer team suffered a disappointing loss in Game 1 of 2018, and seeing the men's response after tying the Ambrose Lions, you'd think they'd have lost as well. It was just poorly executed, uh, had to substitute to what should be our best attacking player off for half the game just because of lack of performance. Now, both teams have to make up those lost points against the always dangerous state Trojans, followed by the Olds Broncos on Sunday, games that they've prepared for diligently this week. Three days to prepare for the next uh, set of games, which will be much more difficult than this. Both teams will require better offensive play in order to earn their first victories this season. Not necessarily to finish, but to get points. And of course, scoring goals is, is a key part of that. So we got to put the ball in the back of the net. And competing on the road will bring other challenges, particularly for the new additions. I think it's an adjustment period, especially for the new guys, right, who, who've never, you know, traveled with the squad uh, to state, which is a tough away opponent. So it's just about, you know, acclimating yourself to that new travel uh, custom. Josh Ryan, Primetime Local Sports. The Lloydminster Barons made a statement to the rest of the Wheatland Football League with a win over Hunting Hills in Red Deer, one of the top Tier 2 programs in Alberta. Now the win was not only a confidence boost for the team, but a solid gauge for where the squad sits in terms of development. It was a good feeling because they were a pretty good team, and it was nice playing a really good team to start the season to like show us what we are right now, where we're at. Head coach Aaron Harper says leadership from the team's seniors has played a big role in the early season success. Our grade 12 guys were, have been really good. Uh, Ethan May there, Garrett Hatcher, um, Josh Donovan has been really good on defense. I think the leadership and morale is a lot different from last year. I think guys really stepped up this year and they're ready to be leaders and do what needs to be done. Next up for the Barons is a trip to St. Paul tomorrow evening to play the Lions. And that's your look at sports. Let's check a look at weather with Michaela. All right, this is what they woke up to in Lacombe this morning. This was sent in by Chris. It is definitely snow timber, unfortunately. Snow came early this year, uh, and North Battleford currently under a frost advisory. Three degrees here in the border city, feeling more like minus one. Cold Lake, Wainwright, Bonneville, all those areas, including Lloydminster, could be seeing some uh, rain or some freezing rain as well as some fog in the morning commute. So do be careful. Do give yourself extra time tomorrow. Uh, the numbers tomorrow not looking too good. Only an eight for your high here and in North Battleford. I'll have your seven day forecast coming up a little bit later in the show. We are joined once again by Canadian astronaut Colonel Jeremy Hansen. And Colonel Hansen, let's first of all start out with some of the, I, I call them fascinating things. I don't know if it's old hat for you already, but just looking at the bio on the website, some of the great experiences you've had with just some of the training exercises. Uh, can you tell me a little bit of, uh, about some of those that you, you have to take part in as, as part of your job? Yeah, I guess, you know, in a really concise nutshell, I've had some tremendous life experiences. Probably the highlights for me, uh, I had a caving expedition in Sardinia, Italy, uh, where we, we learned to be cavers. A group of six astronauts, they taught us the, the technique to cave safely, explore a caving system. And then we went on a, a one-week expedition where we just went further and further into the cave each day, exploring, mapping looking for uh, and collecting uh, science on, on the life that's in the cave and doing real research, which is an analog, uh, something similar to space exploration. 
had another experience where I lived on the ocean floor for a week, uh, similar, probably the richest life experience I've had to see uh, how the ocean works uh, you know, day to day, the, how the fish uh, have had patterns. It was a really incredible life experience uh, for me. Now, so that was very rich. And when you mentioned that, Jeremy, I think that if there are kids watching this, they're going to think, you know, these are some really cool experiences that I could do as well. What advice would you have for somebody who is younger but is thinking that an astronaut or, or working, you know, similar to, to what you do is something that they want to do? How do they get on that track and stay on that track? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, the, the reason we do that type of training is because we, we're teaching astronauts to be explorers here on the planet before we send them off the planet. And for young Canadians who are interested in being part of the space uh, program or just being explorer, that's the key is to push themselves, to challenge themselves. You know, for me, it was the Air Cadet program that I joined as a, as a, as a, young, uh, a young Canadian that pushed me, pushed my boundaries, uh, taught me leadership skills, but also encouraged me to do things that I was afraid to do. And, uh, and really started to teach me to explore and uh, to have those skill sets. So I would encourage young Canadians, uh, obvious, obviously academics are important, but pushing your limits, putting yourself in new and unique um, experiences is really important. Now, if you had to, and this is probably going to be a tough question, but if you had to pick the best thing about being an astronaut, Jeremy, what would it be? Hmm. Um, yeah, that is tough. <laughs> There's a lot of really cool things we get to do, but if I really step back, the thing that I'm most proud of is our international cooperation. I think it's largely taken for granted, but we have set goals so big in the space program that not just one country signs up to take part. We attract international collaboration from around the world. You know, within the International Space Station, we have Canada, of course, the United States, Russia, Japan, the European Space Agency, which is comprised of many, many different participating countries. And we take on one of the toughest challenges, keeping humans alive in space and actually doing productive science in low Earth orbit. And we do it as an international partnership, and that's pretty significant. And I work with these people day to day, and uh, and I have 100% confidence and faith and trust in those people, and I think that's a pretty significant contribution to the world. Well, Jeremy, I could go on and ask you many more questions, but unfortunately, we're out of time. So I want to thank you once again for taking the time to talk to us. I know that a lot of people in the Cold Lake area will remember you and have some fond memories. So we will continue to follow your career, and we hope to speak with you again sometime. Yeah, it's a real treat. I hope to speak with you in the future as well. It's a place that's near and dear to my heart. So thanks very much for asking me to join. Thank you very much. Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. The Humboldt Broncos played their first game since April's deadly bus crash that claimed the lives of 16 people, including 10 players. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Standing arm in arm, former and current players stood stoically during a powerful rendition of Amazing Grace. 29 yellow and green flags unfurled to honor the victims. The numbers of all those involved in the crash were retired, never to be worn again by another Broncos player. Only two players who survived the crash remain on the Broncos roster this season. City Council had a review of a new traffic bylaw for Lloydminster containing new rules regarding trailers being parked on residential streets. As Brittany Matika reports, City Council isn't ready to pass the bylaw just yet. Council is looking whether hitched and unhitched trailers should be able to park on city streets. And for what length of time, administration proposed that unhitched trailers shouldn't be allowed to park on roadways for any amount of time. However, councillors were not sure if this was the right step to take. I don't think it's okay to drop it off on Sunday night and leave it there for the remainder of the week till you hitch back up on Friday. There should be some responsibility there just because I do feel that if everyone in the streets did that, it does leave room for um, accidents definitely to happen. Council was very mixed on what bylaws should be in place for trailers. This created a lot of back and forth in chambers. 
it affects everyone. Uh, there was discussions about campers being parked over sidewalks and campers being parked in front of other people's places and things like that. There's a lot of discussion and we want to make sure that information is clear. Council has asked administration to provide them with more information to bring back to another meeting. Oh, I think it's wonderful that people get out with their families and do enjoy the camping season. I do think there should be also some responsibility on the owners for those trailers that they don't just leave them on the street all summer long. There was questions around licensed, unlicensed, insured, uninsured. So I think we're going to seek some clarity from administration on that very matter to ensure that people understand, we understand as council before we create a bylaw. That's the most important to ensure that there's clarity for council because if we don't understand it, I'm sure most of the residents will be left not quite clear. Brittany Matika, Primetime Local News. And it's time now for our Healthy Living segment. On this week's health panel, I'm joined by Larissa Scott, who is an exercise therapist, and she's been telling us a little bit about the benefits of stretching. So Larissa, tell me, what kinds of benefits can the average person get by just including stretching into their routine? By starting to include some stretching into your daily routine, you notice that your overall tightness is going to decrease, you'll have some increased blood flow, um, just overall sleep is going to improve, um, which then leads to increase in mood, increase in appetite, and just overall general health. So what kinds of things can we do at home uh, by ourselves to help with that? Um, a really common one that I've noticed with a lot of people that work desk jobs um, or just everyone that's on our phones 90% of the time is that we always have our shoulders rounded. So a really good one is just to open up your shoulders. It's just a scap set. So I have Chase here helping me demonstrate. So a really good way is I always say push your shoulders down and then squeeze back and then you're going to hold for 10 to 20 seconds. Relax. Um, and then do that three to five times. You can do it whenever. You can do it at home, at the desk, um, while you're driving. That's a really common one. We always seem to lose our posture while we drive. So will you feel like a tightness? Um, yeah, you'll probably feel a tightness in here and even a pinch um, down in your shoulder because lots of us lose that strength in the back of our shoulder because we're so protruded forward all the time. And what else can we do to help? Um, and then another really good one is just um, our backside always gets really tight. Um, so with fascial, it's a net that just lines our whole body from head to toe. So you're thinking if you're sitting, you want to sit up nice and tall to kind of tighten that net. Um, and then if you're just sitting, you want to have your leg straight out, pull that toe back to also keep that net tight. And then if you can, lean forward as long as you're keeping that back nice and straight. And then I'd hold this one for 20 to 30 seconds also. Relax, repeat three times. So where exactly on the body are you going to be feeling all of the stretch pull? Um, so this one, you're going to feel it majority on the hamstrings and the calves if you have your toe pulled back, but keeping your back and your posture upright, you're also going to feel it um, probably a little bit in your low back also. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there anything we can do like to help increase just like our flexibility, like bending forward? Um, a really common one actually is just allowing yourself to bend forward and kind of fall forward. So even if you, you can stay seated. seated. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then if you just allow your body to kind of fall in between your knees, like you're going to run your hands down to your toes. And then just letting your spine relax and kind of round. Lots of people think that we should be avoiding this, but it's actually really good health um, to get that mobility and blood flow circulating in our low back. And how often should someone be stretching? Um, I would say every day. It's definitely not going to hurt um, incorporating it once, even twice throughout your day. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Larissa, and sharing all of that information on us on how stretching can help increase our overall health. Thank you. Coming up tomorrow night, load the kids in the car and head for a drive-in movie. It's all in support of the Lloydminster Rescue Squad. This is the second time they've done it. The second annual drive-in movie It's going to take place at the Lloyd Mall. They start things off with a kid zone. That's going to open up at 530. There's going to be bouncy houses. There's going to be face painting, a whole lot of fun for the kids. Then they'll start the movie at dark. So make sure you head out for the drive-in movie in support of the Lloydminster Rescue Squad tomorrow night. 
Sunday morning right here at Bud Miller Park, you're going to see a number of people going for a run all in support of the Terry Fox Foundation. Sunday morning is the annual Terry Fox Run. Registration will begin at 9 a.m. at Bud Miller Park and the run will get underway at 10 o'clock. And if you don't think you can run five kilometers, that's okay. You can walk five kilometers. The great part about the Terry Fox Run is it's no cost to register and there's no minimum pledges that you need to raise. You just come out and support a great cause, the Terry Fox Foundation. If you'd like to register, you can go online terryfox.org and we'll see you Sunday morning. This week we want you to win some new music, maybe some great music that you can run to if you're taking part in the Terry Fox run. It's the latest album from Grammy Award winner The Weeknd, My Dear Melancholy. It includes the hit Call Out My Name. If you want a copy, it's really easy. All you have to do is email your name and daytime phone number to tvcontest at newcap.ca. We want to say thanks to John at Universal Music Canada for setting us up with the music. And it's corn on the cob season and coming up on Saturday night at the Frenchman Butte Legion is hosting their third annual corn roast. They start serving up at 4 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a great one. I'm Heather Kleigis and that's what's happening. All right, well, unfortunately for the Terry Fox run, it's going to be a little wet, maybe a little snowy even. Looking at our numbers currently, three here in the border city. The precipitation is leaning off, but it's going to continue overnight, and we could see some freezing rain in the area. Looking at our numbers tomorrow, a high of six here. Same within Vermilion, Vagerville, a little bit cooler in Edmonton, where they actually saw quite a bit of snow overnight. Here's a look at your next 24 hours. There is that precipitation moving in and out throughout the day, and again, that could bring some fog as well as some freezing rain in the in the morning. Uh, look at your school day forecast. 8 a.m. going to be zero degrees. You're going to need to bundle up. Recess two. Lunchtime a little bit warmer and then home time five degrees. So you're definitely going to need to bundle up. There we go. Look at that wet for the weekend, especially for that Terry Fox run. North Battleford is actually under a frost advisory, so do be careful over there. And then we are going to warm back up after the weekend, but we just got to get through that wet, wet weekend. But we're going to go check back in with Brittany, who I hope got better at some axe throwing. I'm joined again by Richard Young, we're at Axe Rising, and as you saw earlier, I tried my hand at throwing an axe, and now we are on to some safe archery. So this doesn't actually have a tip on it, does it, Richard? No, it's a blunt point, so it's, it's made to be safe for kids to do it and for adults as well. And yeah. So now, and this is a regular standard type bow? Yes, it is, yes. All right, so are you ready to give me some lessons? I will, yes. <gasps> yeah, just have to watch your wrist, uh, first of all, of course. And then uh, keep your fingers down off the uh, bow and twist your little bit wrist and put your hand down. That was a fail. That was not very good. Let me try one more. I got to regain. Okay. So I put it, turn it like this. Yeah, white part out. And then put your finger down below okay. and keep it a bit of an angle. Very good. Well, I didn't make it hit one of the targets, but I did hit the back. So, you know, that's a lot of fun, and it's nice that it's safe so that there's no danger and I can do it indoors. Yes, you can. Yeah, indoors or outdoors, depending on the weather, of course. So down here at Axe Rising, we have the axe throwing, we have the safe archery, and there's a variety of other activities you can come down and do. So you should definitely come down and check them out. I mean, Richard is an excellent teacher. So thank you so much for sharing everything with that or all that information with me today. Uh, thanks for coming out as well, you guys. I appreciate you being here. So Awesome. Well, thanks so much. We're just going to head on back over to the studio now and have yourself a great evening. Check in with Michaela for some social media trends. Oh, well, I think her archery skills were a little bit better than her yeah. axe throwing. Well, she, she got it. Like yeah, she did. Not live. Like she, she got it in the recorded yeah, mm -hmm. bit. I wonder how many practices she got there. But Lots. Uh, we got an overwhelming <laughs> response from you guys yesterday when we asked you to send in your pet pictures. Over 300, so we couldn't resist. We had to share some more. Yeah, Here it. is Aww. Ted. He's got a little bow tie as a mustache. He's so cute. This was sent in by Kayla. So thanks so much, Kayla, for sending that in. This is Rango. I don't like lizards, but uh, 
He's a Rango's, cool lizard. Look at him yeah, getting his... Yeah, he's cute from a distance. Getting uh, his uh, tan <laughs> this, on. Yeah, he was, this was sent in by Siobhan. And uh, look at this little puppy birthday party. 13 years old. That's Sophie celebrating with her friend Bella. And that was sent in by Christina. And then a look at this tank, the turtle. That was sent in by Brandy. Look at that. He's enjoying a nice salad before the snow comes. Yeah. Well, he's and got then, his house <laughs> on his back. so Yeah, there you go. go. And then Schultz and Pebbles looking through the window right there. That one was sent in by Pat so so adorable keep sending in your pet pictures we'd love to feature them here on primetime local news uh, but we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back to wrap up the show furniture set and design supplied by furniture gallery and furniture house downtown lloyd minster Here is Brittany, oh. and this is the one time she actually hit the target on camera. So she says she hit it a few times. Oh, off look at camera, her celebrate her. Yeah, she's really happy <laughs> because every just yeah, let her have it. Every yeah. time she was live, it she wasn't getting it. So we're happy you got it, Brittany. Maybe you're better. That was over at uh, Axe or Rise, Axe Rising. Yeah, yeah there we go. Uh, we're gonna take a quick look at our forecast before we go because unfortunately this weekend is gonna be a wet and cold one. Six degrees for your high tomorrow, and that precipitation is gonna continue on through Saturday and Sunday, uh, and that's when the Terry Fox run is. So definitely bundle up if you're partaking in that. But we are going to warm back up next week. Four degrees on Monday, six for Tuesday, zero for the low then, and then seven degrees on Wednesday, and then back up to eight degrees. These were in the double digits, but unfortunately they've gone back down. But there's still time to change it around, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Exactly. And uh, just before we go, I kind of want to touch back on our question of the day. If, uh, if you don't know, we do post a question of the day every day on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram page. And today's was, do you want to see back paddling coming back? <laughs> The majority of you said yes. Is it down in the 60s? It's, it, it's at 62 percent right, right now, and uh, I'm, oh I'm surprised. Are you surprised with this direction? Yeah, we're all surprised at that. But it makes for useful conversation. It tells you yeah. about where folks are thinking, and maybe there's room for change. Maybe there's ways to discuss other alternatives. Yeah, I, I. I'm very surprised. But, but we're struggling with the results. Yes, yeah. this is true. That uh, yeah. I don't know. I feel like people say they want it back, but if it were to actually be implemented, I don't know how yeah. they would feel. Oh, you'd hear the huh. yeah. I It'd didn't know what it was until <laughs> someone explained it to me today. So. Yeah, exactly. Really? Uh, You've yeah. never gotten one of those? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that's it for Primetime Local News tonight. We'll see you back tomorrow. Take care.